the Lord has put things in the earth to teach us about him. Water. Water takes different forms. Water can be a liquid, it can be a solid in the form of ice, and it can be gas. Three separate distinct forms, yet all water. And he says, I'm using this to teach you about me. I'm the father of creation. I'm the son of redemption. And I'm the Holy Ghost in keeping you in the earth. But I'm God. Not three separate gods. Not God the father. God the... I'm just water. I'm God. I'm the spirit. I move. Anything with more than one head is a freak, including God. James chapter 2 verse 19 James chapter 2 verse 19 you believe there is one God you do well <laughs> the devils believe also and they tremble you can't believe there's one God and not do something about it even the devil does something about it <clears throat> would you stand on your feet now in honor to the word of the Lord <clears throat> And we are in the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, King James Version, and in verse 13, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, in the King James Version. And we are hearing what the Lord is saying to us this morning. How many want to hear what the Lord is saying? Thank God you have a man of God that hears what the Lord says and gives you what the Lord says. Many times what the Lord said is not always what we want to hear, but is always what we need to hear. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. If you have it, would you say amen? We're going to read verse 13 through 15 out loud together. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. They shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all. Now God declared that the name I am is his name forever. It's eternal. Would you just set, set your Bibles down now and lift your hands unto the Lord. Ask him to speak to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you right now. We adore you. We appreciate you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Speak, Lord, like only I know you can. Speak unto us. Cause your people to hear and above all follow. Cause us to follow. Cause us to follow. To be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lest we deceive ourselves. We love you, Lamb of God. Oh, come on, let the hungry lift their voices unto God. Let the hungry open up their mouths and, and begin to address their God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. God bless you. Thank you as you're seated in his wonderful presence.
On this Father's Day, the Lord gave me this message of I am that I am. One of the unique things in the scriptures is that there is a, not really any good examples of fathers that are listed. Now, there's quite a few good examples of mothers in the scriptures that are listed. But there really isn't any good natural fathers that are listed. And so the ultimate father that we always have to look to is God. Can you say amen to that? And definitely before we enter, we want to give God praise for Apostle and Prophet Estabs. Would you put your hands together for them this morning and give God thanks for them. We appreciate them. The Lord has sent you an apostle. The Lord has sent you a prophetess because of the work that must get done in this hour. It's not just throwing around titles and trying to sound something big. You have to understand titles because God gave them, and God gave them for reasons. Amen. Just like if you need your teeth done, you don't go to uh, a fireman. The title tells you what they do. A dentist tells you what they do. So it is in the Lord. The Lord gives titles to people because it tells you the function and the anointing, the equipment that God has given them to perform. Can you say amen? And so it is needful, and we give God praise for them and for their love, and they are people of great hospitality. My goodness, we have just laughed so hard and um, till we were just hurting at times and then ate so much uh, that we were hurting again. Uh, uh, my God, if they feed us anymore, we're going to need our own zip code. <clears throat> um, but uh, we, we just thank God for the goodness. And, of course, I love my precious wife. So grateful for her. Would you put your hands together for her this morning as well? Thank God for her sweet spirit. I am that I am. Um, look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. <clears throat> Excuse me, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 in the King James. Uh, Jesus speaking, and it's imperative that, apostolics is imperative that we study. We, we've been in church sometimes 20, 30 years, and we still believe things that really are not scripturally sound. Simply because we don't take time. We study everything else. We study computers. We study our job. We study for assignments. And we don't take time to study that which is eternal. Jesus said this, after this manner, pray who? Pray ye. This is what we traditionally call the Lord's Prayer. But Jesus is making this clear. I don't pray this way. You pray this way. This is not the Lord's Prayer. This is the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer is St. John 17. That's the high priest prayer of Jesus. For those of you taking notes, that's St. John 17, the high priest prayer of Jesus. If you want to know how Jesus prays, you look at St. John 17. But after this manner, pray ye. The Lord said, this is the way you pray. And then he said, the first thing you begin to pray is, Our Father, which art in heaven. So he tells you to address him as father. Father speaks about the fact that he is the origin of all things. He is the creator of all things. Everything comes from him. I said everything. Let me show you how much everything we mean. Look at Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. So you can see what God says he created. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. God said, I create light. God also said, I create darkness. God also said, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. How does God create evil? Not that hard. If you shut off the lights, what immediately do you have? Darkness. How does God create evil? He simply retracts the influence of his goodness. And whatever he is comes with him, and whatever he is not remains behind, which is evil. So the devil didn't even create evil. God did. 
He is the Father of all things. The Bible refers to him as the Father of light, in whom there is no shadow of turning. But what he would like to convey to you this morning is he is teaching us how to be as he is. And he refers to himself as I am, not I was. Although he uses the term to Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, the three phases of God, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. But what you learn about God is he simply is. The Bible never tries to explain God's existence. In Genesis 1 and 1, the Bible just simply opens up and says, In the beginning, God. End of story. Never tries to tell you where he came from. Doesn't try to explain to you where he came from. Not even interested in trying to explain to you where, you came, where he came from. Why? That's like you trying to explain to a five-year-old where a baby came from. Good luck. In other words, it is something that is still beyond our comprehension. There's something, amen, that we'll have to understand. The old saints used to sing a song, we'll understand it better by and by. It simply says this when it comes to God, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It simply begins to tell you this in regards to God. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. So you simply have to accept that he exists. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then you must understand that the fact that he exists, if you will start to pursue him, he will begin to reveal himself unto you. Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, help me to seek you. But the name I am, whether you're talking about God as a father, whether you're dealing with God as a mother, you must understand the reason why there is male and female is because it takes both. It is not simply the man that is in the image of God. It is also the woman who's in the image of God. It takes both male and female to come together to make the total image of God in representation. Because God is that vast and God is that awesome. So the I am, what do you mean Israel was in slavery? God has a very unique way of doing things. Here they are in difficulty and they're in trouble. They've been in slavery for almost 430 years. They need deliverance. They need for God to make a way. They need for God to bring them out. God does not give some elaborate escape method to come out of Egypt. Instead, the first thing that God does is begin a process of revelation of himself. Whenever God wants to bring you out of a situation, get ready for a revelation regarding himself. Why? Because revelation causes a manifestation to come into your situation. Let me back it up and say it to you another way. Revelation causes preservation to come into your situation. It's when you can see God that you can become like God and become sustained in your situation. So the I am. He said, I want you to understand this name is eternal. This name is not like the name Jehovah, which I began to leave off as I came into the New Testament. But this name shall last forever. Now, I want you to catch this. Even the name Jesus has an end. Well, I understand you being quiet because you don't study to know. We don't need the name Jesus in heaven. Because Jesus is a saving name. We will already be saved once we get to heaven. That's why John said when I looked at him, I saw a new name. There was another name written in his thigh because that name Jesus we will not have need of at that point because that name will have accomplished its purpose. 
but I am, shall continue. Because what he's telling you is, I am your father. If you want an example of a father, maybe your father was not there for you. Maybe your father was not the one, amen, that should have been there for you. But I am your father. Not, not I will be your, I am your father. I am a present help in the time of trouble. But you must understand what God was telling Moses. This was not some poetic fancy uh, name that he was using. But this was a revelation in itself to who God is. What did you mean, I am that I am? Well, one of the translations that really come forth means, I will be what I will be. Well, what does that mean? It means, I will become what I need to become. In other words, I will be what I will be, but you cannot determine all that I will be until you need me to be it. Then I am. So you don't know I'm a doctor until you become sick. Now that you are sick, now I am a doctor. You don't know I'm a friend until you're lonely and don't have no friends. Now that you're lonely, now I am a friend. So I must allow you to have a situation so you can get a revelation of who I am. And if you understand that, you will stop just crying over the situation and you will lift your hands and ask God for the revelation of show me who you are. And that in seeing you, I would become like you. It is in the struggle that we have in everyday living. Wondering at times, amen, as we go through life's journey, how sometimes we are going to make it. Have you ever, can I have some honest folk in this house? Have you ever just had times where you think, my God, I don't know if I can make another day because things are just so tough. And then there's times you think, I don't even know if I want to make another day, even if I could. Uh, there's one thing to be on the floor, but sometimes you feel like you're underneath the floor. But God said, I want you to know something. No matter what your state, I am what you have need of. You don't have to look nowhere else. I am your father. I know how to pick you up and rock you in the cradle of my arms. There are times when you have to learn from a baby. Look at Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. You got to learn from a baby. Babies have some understandings that sometimes adults need to gain in reference to God. Matthew 11 verse 12 and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Well those of you that deal with babies you know babies have a way of taking things by force. They will take your lap by force. They will decide that they want to get up in your lap and they will start climbing you like a tree. They will begin to cry until you pick them up. It is a proven medical fact that when a baby cries, your blood pressure goes up. God has designed it that you cannot ignore the cry of a baby, even if it's not your baby. Somebody other, other's baby cry, you start looking around. It's not even your baby, but you start looking around because it brings a response. God's trying to tell you something, that when you cry unto me, you have my attention. Nobody else may want to listen to you. Nobody else may want to pay attention to you, but I am your father, and I will listen to you. There are times you must simply look at Jesus the way a baby would begin to, to respond to a, a parent and just lift their hands. You know one thing about a child, they don't have to have a whole lot of words. They'll just lift their hands and go up. And sometimes they don't even know how to speak yet. They just simply lift their hands and you know what they mean. That's why sometimes you got to lift your hands to God and say, I just need you to pick me up. Pick me up out of this depression. Pick me up out of this loneliness. Pick me up out of this weariness. Pick me up out of this frustration. Somebody lift your hands to God and just shout, up. I just need you to lift me up. The power of God being the Father is the fact that he can do what no other power can do. It means that God can handle things you cannot handle. And God can deal with things that you may even think you can handle. 
One of the problems we're having with God is that we only want to bring what we consider the large things to God. The small stuff, God, I got this. I'll handle it. But if you're wise, you learn. You learn very quickly to bring everything to God. The psalmist, the hymnist said, Oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's why when God gives you the understanding of parenting, it's to teach you about the relationship you should have with God. When you have a small child, you tell that child, acknowledge me in everything. You want something to eat? You come and acknowledge me. You need to go to the bathroom? You acknowledge me. You want to go over someone's house? You acknowledge me, and then I direct your path. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways, and He shall direct your path. When you accept Him as your Father, then you will acknowledge Him in everything. You know what sometimes you tell your child? You're getting a little too big for your britches. You acting too grown. And I'm telling you, that's what God's looking at you saying. Some of you, God's looking at you going, you acting too grown. You acting like you don't need a father. You acting like you've got this all together yourself. And that's why sometimes I got to let some situations overwhelm you and put you back in your place as my child. That makes you look back up to God and sing the song, I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. Somebody lift your hands just a moment again and worship him because he is worthy. Thank you for being our father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to walk through just a few things here in the combination of the name of Jesus and I am. John, the revelator, received the revelation that the name I am was eternal. And he, he, above all the other gospel writers, places I am in conjunction with the name of Jesus and then begins to reveal to you through this who Jesus is to you. So St. John chapter 5, or excuse me, St. John chapter 6, verse 35. St. John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus makes this declaration, and this is so imperative. He says, I am the bread of life. You see, when you're naturally hungry, you can eat food and satisfy yourself. But what do you eat when your soul is hungry? What do you eat when you are starving for love and starving for attention? See, if you're not careful, you will eat the wrong thing. You will begin to eat things that you should not have, such as you will begin to take in drugs and take in sexual relationships just so you meet that need. But he said, I want you to know something. All of these things have side effects and they will damage you. But I am the bread of life. If you will partake of me, not only will you be made full, but you shall have life and that more abundantly. Somebody clap your hands and thank God for being the bread of life. Now to verse 41 in the same chapter. Verse 41, we're still in St. John chapter 6. He then begins to tell them, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. In other words, what I want you to understand is what I'm offering you is not something from this earth. Everything from this earth deteriorates, falls apart, has side effects. But what I'm offering you is coming from a perfect place. What I'm offering to give to you is if, if you're willing to open up your heart to me, I'm willing to feed you with that which is perfect. I can satisfy you so you can be in a bedroom all by yourself. People making fun of you, seeming like you've got nowhere to go. But there's the greatest being that is sitting in your bedroom with you. The one that holds the world in the palm of his hand is visiting with you. Oh God, when you understand who he is, you don't cry about being by yourself. Because even though you're alone, you don't have to be lonely. 
I am that bread that came down from heaven. Go now to verse 51. Now to verse 51, same chapter, verse 51, and listen to what he says now. I am the living bread. In other words, not only am I the bread of life, but I am the living bread. It means that when you eat this, I will make the quality of your life better. I will cause you to live in another realm. I'll cause you to live in another dimension. Oh, someone shout, I am. Uh, do you see what John's doing? John's putting the I am with the names of Jesus or titles to Jesus. And so he goes on. John goes on with this. Now go to St. John chapter 8 verse 12. St. John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus makes this declaration I am the light of the world it's when you feel like you're sitting in darkness I don't know about you but sometimes reading the newspaper is depressing sometimes reading the news and 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 looking at these things are depressing you see people shooting people you see people amen doing all kinds of craziness till you're almost afraid to go out your own house but God said I want you to understand something in a dark and dying world I am your light I will oh God I am your comfort i'm the one that will light your path and help you to walk where you need to walk and if you understand that you're not afraid of the darkness that you're reading about and that you're looking at someone shout i am the light of the world then saint john chapter 8 verse 24 saint john chapter 8 verse 24 jesus said this except you believe that i am he you shall die in your sins. What do you mean I am he? Well, he's taking this from the Old Testament, the phrase that's given to God, that I am he. What do you mean? It means in essence that I am the self-existing one. I am the one that handles all things. In other words, can I put it to you simply? I'm the man. Mm -hmm. I know you think you're the man. I know, you I know you think you're the main meal and the snack on the side. I know you think you, you just got it all together. But God said, no, I'm he. I'm the one that has it all. You need something, you come to I am he. You come to the one that has it all together. You come to the one that knows how to create it even if it doesn't exist. That's why God is never, ever bound to your situation. Can I tell you something about God? God will purposely prove that he's greater than your situation by not being bound to your deadlines. There are deadlines that sometimes you set, and there's deadlines that companies set. That you need to pay something by a certain time, you need to have something by a certain time, and God sometimes purposely will violate the deadline to show you that I'm God enough to keep you while the deadline's violated. I'll hold them back from doing what they said they will do until I manifest what I said I would do. Someone shout, I am. Now to John 8, 58. John chapter 8, verse 58. Listen to Jesus with this. He said, before Abraham was. Just in case you really don't know who I am, let me explain by this phrase who I am. Before you had a problem, I am. Before you were sick, I am. Before you were in debt, I am. Before you were lonely, I am. What that means is before you were alive to have the problem, I was alive with the answer. Before you were alive to have the struggle, I was alive with the deliverance. And if you will look to me that I existed before, then you will understand that I'm worthy of your praise, worthy of your glory, worthy of your honor. You will lift your hands. You're not afraid of your neighbor. You're not telling me it's not your personality to lift your hands and praise me. But you recognize that I am... Somebody needs to praise him for being the I am.
I am. St. John chapter 10, verse 9. St. John chapter 10, verse 9. John continues. John says, I want you to see this. That this name is eternal and it's in connection with Jesus. So he, Jesus then says, I am the door. Oh, I wish some of you would understand this. Because you pray that God opens the door and you don't understand he is the door. You keep asking God to open a door for a new job, open a door to make a way for your finances, open a door for your ministry. What you really need to be asking God to do is open the door of yourself to me. Open yourself to me because when God opens the door, no man can shut it. God said, I'll set before you an open door which no man can shut. It means they don't have to like you. But if God opens the door, you're walking through. I wonder if I got a witness in the house. Sometimes people, sometimes people don't want you in a particular place. Sometimes they don't want you somewhere. But if God opens the door, if God opens himself and gives you access, there's nothing the enemy can do about it but get out of the way. Somebody needs to lift their hands right now and say, God, I need you to open the door of yourself to me. When it comes to my finances, I need you to open the door of yourself. When it comes to my job, I need you to open the door of yourself. When it comes to my business, I need you to open the door of yourself. When it comes to my relationships, I need you to open the door of yourself. Be my father. I am your father. I will take care of you. Come with some of you parents, you love your children so much you're willing to lay down your life. Well, God already beat you to it. Hallelujah. How do you not respond to a God like this? How do you so stuck in your personality that you can't respond to love like this? How are you so afraid of your friends and people and that you don't know? How to respond to a God that loves you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11 of also chapter 10. Verse 11. He speaks again. He says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd's going to lay down his life for the sheep. He says, I'm the good shepherd. In other words, I'll lead you. Psalms 22, Psalms 23, Psalms 24 is a trilogy regarding God being your shepherd. In Psalms 22, where David talks about him being crucified, he's the good shepherd. In Psalms 23, where he talks about the fact that he'll lead you and he'll take care of you, he's the great shepherd. In Psalms 24, when he talks about that he's the king of glory, he's the chief shepherd. what he's saying to you I'm your good shepherd I loved you so much until I laid down my life for you and if I laid down my life for you why are you concerned if I'll meet your electric bill why are you so worried wondering if I'm going to show up to help you why are you acting like you're not sure if I'm coming or not and why are you so confident in your friends who are humans who can fail? But he who is omnipresent, he who is perfect, he who never fails. May I introduce you to a trillion star general that has never lost a battle. Why won't you have confidence that I am a present help in the time? of trouble hallelujah I said I'm the good shepherd St. John 10 36 verse 36 he said to them why are you acting like I'm blaspheming because I said I am the son of God he is the expressed image of his person 
Hebrews 1 and 3 tells us that, that he's the expressed image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. In other words, he's the photograph of God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is the seen of the unseen. He's the tangible to the intangible. He's the touchable to the untouchable. St. John eleven twenty five. St. John eleven twenty five. you may feel like the love between you and your spouse is dead. You may feel like your finances are dead. You may feel like your heart is dead because it's been so hurt and wounded. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I know how to resurrect you. I know how to bring you back up out of that grave that you have found yourself in. I have the keys of death and hell. Revelations 1, 18. I have the keys of death and hell. I know how to unlock your prison doors. You may feel shut away, but I know how to open the door and bring you out. The devil may be actually laughing at you and trying to make you feel like you're a failure, but I dare you to say, Daddy's coming. Give somebody a high five and tell them, Daddy's coming. Oh, daddy's coming. I know, I know, I know. If I'll just hold up, he'll show up. I am. I am the resurrection. St. John 14 and 6. St. John 14 and 6. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You see, I'm not scratching my head, wondering which way to take you. I am the way you should travel. I've already mapped out the way you should go. You must learn to upgrade to God's GPS, God's program system. I'm not going to give you the whole map. I'll just tell you the next turn. <laughs> because I'm asking you to trust me. That it's all inside of me. And I'll reveal it as it is needed. I know you want me to tell it to you in advance. But I'm going to tell it to you when you need it. I am the way. <laughs> I am the truth. Because I am your father. I'll tell you truth about yourself. Oh, God. <laughs> I know there's some stuff you don't want to hear, but I'm going to tell it to you. Because I am your father. I will let you know when you're selfish. But I will also compliment you and not let you know when you're doing things right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. Finally, let's end with St. John chapter 15, verse 1. St. John chapter 15, verse 1, as we've gone through 12 I am's, which establish the government of God into your life. For the number 12 deals with the perfection of government. He says, I'm the true vine. What do you mean? I'm the one that you grow out from. I am the source of your life. I am what makes you productive. If you disconnect from me as the vine, then you're going to wither and die. If you make something else the source other than me, you're going to find destruction. But if you will look to me as your origin, as your father, as the one that gives birth to things in your life, that creates things to happen in your life, then you will become productive. Would you lift your hands right now and give him glory? I am your father. I am your father. Hmm. What do you need me to be to you today? I am. Your heart's been broken. I am your healer. You feel alone like nobody wants you. I am your friend. 
Psalms 27 and 10 says, when mother and father forsake you, the Lord shall take you up. So I stand ready as your I am for whatever you need me to be. But the scriptures are clear. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. I can be what I need to be to you, but you have to be willing to be receptive. And you've got to be willing to come after me. One more time, lift your hands to him. I hear the Lord just saying, we're going to open up this altar for a few moments. Those of you that want to come, it's up to you, friend. This is your time to deal with the I am. Why don't you tell him? Why don't you just be honest with him? I'm hurting. I need a healer. I'm fearful. I'm so afraid of so many things. I'm afraid of the future. I'm afraid of getting hurt. I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of the unknowns of my life, which include my past. I'm afraid of things I don't understand. I need you to be the I am to me right now. Whatever the Lord gives you to sing, honey. The children are coming in. It's eleven fifteen. The children are coming in eleven twenty-five. We thank you right now, Good Jesus. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to Thee I free. trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all Lord Jesus Oh. Ah. 
I surrender. You know that I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, Lord Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all, all to Thee. For I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, Lord, I surrender all to you. I give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing with holding nothing, oh, with holding nothing, because my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Ooh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you, I give myself away. Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away to you, to you, Lord. 
I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away oh, to you, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. Can we lift our hands to the Lord and just love Him? Aren't you glad to know the I Am is with you? Oh, the I Am, whatever you need, is with you right now. And He knows what you need before you even know. Isn't it awesome to know the I Am knows what you need? Oh, can we just lift our hands and lift our voices to the Lord and worship Him right now? What a beautiful spirit of the Father's love is in this house right now. God, we glorify You. Lord, we yield ourselves to you. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We give you praise and glory. We honor and adore you, Father. Oh, that's it. Lift your voice to the Lord. Let's love our heavenly Father right now. We love you, Lord God. We worship you. You're all that we ever will need. All that we have ever needed. And we glorify you with all that is within us. Bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now would you clap your hands and begin to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let everybody say praise the Lord. Anybody feel the closeness of the Father right now? Hallelujah, what a beautiful spirit is in this place. Would you greet two or three people? Tell them our Father is here. Hallelujah. It's great to be in the Father's house. It's even better when he's at home, <laughs> when he's here. Amen. But then he does not stop. Psalm 19, verse 1, Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He does not stop with what's in the earth. He moves to the heavens. And one of the greatest symbols he's given us in the heavens is the sun. The S-U-N explains the S-O-N. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. What is the sun? It's a ball of fire. Now watch this. Where I come from originally, Martha's Vineyard, they have beautiful beaches. And so they have what they call sun worshipers. These are people that go to the beach and lay out before the sun. See, to be a worshiper, even the world understands it. They call them sun worshipers, and this is the requirement. You must go out from protection and expose yourself to the sun to worship. Then you must expose yourself and lay down before the sun until the sun changes you. You don't have to tell somebody, you don't have to ask somebody if you've been in the sun. The same token you can tell somebody when they've had a lot of sun, you can tell them, you can, especially in the winter months, you don't have to wonder if they stayed here in Wisconsin. Where'd you go? Because the sun has transformed their image, literally their looks. It transformed. And that's why when you're a true sun worshiper, you will come out from the protective covering of the world that shields you from the love of God. You will begin to peel off your armor and expose yourself to God. You will lay down before God until God changes you. And a true sun worshiper doesn't just lay on his back. He flips over and lays on his stomach because he wants to change all the way around. 